The Nationals road trip wraps up this afternoon in Chicago at Wrigley Field. It's game three, the Nationals and the Cubs. The winner takes the series and the season series as the teams potentially could meet in the month of October. Welcome inside the broadcast booth here at Wrigley. Dave Jagler and FP Santangelo and FP as the season series wraps up between the Nationals and the Cubs. It's all even at three. Does it matter for either club to, to win the season series if these teams meet in October? It does. Today's game seven. It's the most important game in the world. No, it's important to win series, period, not against the Cubs. I think if they do face in October, it'll be a different Nats ball club. But you want to win series. You want to feel good going on the plane tonight. And as far as how we got to this point with the series even at one, the National on Friday. Yeah, strong six and a third from Tanner Roark. Show you a couple of K's. He looks like the Tanner of old. Kept the ball down. Did a nice job. Daniel Murphy hit a couple of home runs. Hit one in the first. His 18th of the year to give him a two nothing lead. This is his second one he hit in the sixth. And then how about the new bullpen? Brandon Kinsler comes in. Gets a bunch of ground balls. Throwing lots of strikes. We're digging what we're seeing from him. And then Ryan Madsen with the strikeouts thrown in the high 90s. We like Ryan in the eighth. And then Sean Doolittle the night the doctor doctor Doolittle gets it done so a four to two win you win game one and then game two yesterday not as good but there was some good things. Yeah and it started with Bryce Harper his 12th home run of the season in the first inning only the third visiting player to bang one off that new scoreboard in right field but Edwin Jackson had a rough first inning allowed four. this is a two run shot for Alex Avila Jackson though settled in kept it close but Wilson Contreras had a big insurance home run for the Cubs that made it seven to three and then Wade Davis survived a couple of walks Nationals did have the puncher's chance late but Wilmer Defoe and Bryce Harper struck out and the Cubs even the series with a seven to four win and you look at the tail of the tape as it's been pretty even three wins for each side and the winner takes the series and would have a potential tiebreaker if they end up tied at the end of the regular season. Well Bryce Harper had an amazing first inning yesterday. We saw his home run and then in the bottom of the first inning he gunned down Wilson Contreras at third base and FP it's a greatest hits addition as far as what he's done throwing the baseball this year. Yeah check out Bryce Harper's arm. We're going to show you some throws right now and probably one of the best arms in right field if not the best arm in right. This was against the Orioles in the 11th inning to keep this game going from right field. An absolute one hop laser. Nice tag by Matt Wieters. Don't forget all the tags on these because these are all mid to upper 90s throws. This was against the Rangers. You remember that guy sliding in, Pete Cosma. We'd like to forget him, but we'll remember that throw by Bryce Harper in the cannon. And this one was backing up a play against the Braves. Watch Matt Kemp sliding to third. Bryce Harper hustling down the right field line. Took the throw off the rail and they made that throw. Then yesterday, 97.8 miles an hour. It reminds me of the throw Ichiro made against the Oakland A's and Terrence Long. One of the better throws you'll ever see from right field. So don't run up Bryce Harper. Eight outfield assists tied for second in the National League. Well Bryce Harper's high school teammates going to be on the hill today for game three of this series. Eric Fetty makes his second major league start. His first had some good moments. His first three major league strikeouts but he faced a tough Rockies lineup. He's going to face another tough challenge today here at Wrigley against the defending champs and the veteran John Lester. We'll have more on these starting pitchers when we come back to Wrigley after this.
from game three of this series. Some cloud cover overhead, a little bit of drizzle falling, but this game's going to start on time. And let's check out some game notes prior to game three. The Nationals are six and five in rubber games of series. They've done very well in series overall this year. Howie Kendrick, what addition he has been. He's in the lineup hitting second and playing left field. And with Eric Fetty on the hill, you check out the performance of Nationals' fifth starters. That includes, uh, for example, Joe Ross, Jacob Turner, A.J. Cole, Jeremy Guthrie, and Eric Fetty gets the chance today. FP, your thoughts from his first outing? Well, it, it's not spin control when, when you liked what you saw, even though he gave up seven runs on ten hits. Why? Well, A, it was a Rockies lineup, and that's a tough one for your first start. And B, he wasn't scared. He went right after him. We liked the fastball, especially away to right-handers. Didn't seem to have the pitch to put guys away, so we'll keep an eye on that today. But another test for him against the Cubs lineup. And how about John Lester coming off a start where he had his first career home run, opposite field piece. It was his first multi-hit game. He'd only last a few innings in that one, just into the fifth as you see the Cubs bullpen. They do a dance every time one of their players hits a home run. I mean, one of their pitchers does, they go berserk. So John Lester doing real well. 3-0 and with a 2-7-7 in his last four starts. 29 strikeouts, five walks. So a big test for the Nats today. They want to get away day win. They want a happy flight back to D.C. as they go home for the big homestand. Lester's career start number 340. Eric Fetty career start number two. We'll see what happens though. Game three. Winner takes the series. The Nats are ready. The Cubs are ready. Phil and Ray have you back in the studio right after this.
Bulls and the Cubs for the series finale here from Wrigley Field. Let's check for the series finale. Bryce Harper will be hitting third, getting set for this one, and his high school teammate Eric Fetty is moments away from his second major league start, and these two sharing the diamond again. And check out this team photo. This is 2009 Las Vegas High School Wildcats. And there they are. Fetty a freshman, Harper a sophomore. There they are. Side by side. Right with the red set on, huh? <laughs> How about and that? They, there they are eight years later. Yeah, two. Same ice. high school, yeah. now in the big leagues together. Unbelievable. They were the battery. Fetty the pitcher, Harper the catcher. Oh, and oh, by the way, Bryce is catching today. Oh, he's not. Now that would be breaking news. Cubs are taking the field. And let's check out the Nationals starting lineup. Goodwin, Kendrick, and Harper are the top three. Zimmerman, Murphy, and Rendon. And Rendon continues to have his name all over the league leaderboard. Weeders back in the lineup after being ejected late in yesterday's game. Defoe and Fetty for the Nats this afternoon. We'll get a look FP at John Lester. What's his repertoire? A fastball 91, cut fastball 88, curveball 76, change 85. Struck out his 2,000th career batter last start and hit his first career home run at his first career multi-hit game. That was on the first against Arizona. He was removed in the fifth, however, after 104 pitches, so pitch count was real high last start. That's a game he could not get the win. I mean, his team won 16 to 4, but as you said, he couldn't get through five with 104 pitches. A Defense guy. behind Lester. Yeah, they'll be picking it today behind him. Schwarber, Jay Hayward, the outfield. Baez, Bryant, left side, half Rizzo, right side, and Wilson Contreras back behind the plate. And he is big with Lester on the hill. His issues throwing to bases, picking off runners, but you have a big time weapon to control the running game in Contreras. A big crowd here today for the finale of this series. Our umpires and the way they line up. It's the plate for Vic Carapaza with the crew chief Tom Hallion at first. And Mark Ripperger and Chad Whitson, who tossed Weeders out of the game yesterday over at third. It's weird. It was nice this morning, then all of a sudden just one cloud moved in off the lake and it's just hovering. It's not even moving. Just a light drizzle, like you said, Dave, but it's not going anywhere. Kind of a pop-up shower, so we don't think it's going to delay the game at all. But it's kind of a weird scene a 120 start local time and the lights are on it almost feels like a night game. Set to get it underway. With Brian Goodwin to face John Lester. Lester against the Nats on June the 29th pitched well one run three hits in six innings. He left with the lead Nationals rallied to go in front but the Cubs took the game in the ninth five to four. Wow. First pitch at 122 with Goodwin showing bunts and FP. Could that be a big part of the arsenal today? Yeah, if those of you who don't know, John Lester has the thing. He can't throw to first. So you'll see him on comebackers run over and underhanded. On bunts, he just lets Chris Bryant field anything to third because he can't turn around and throw. So Brian Goodwin showing bunt early. Not a bad idea. Two and one. Now a pitch was a strike all day yesterday. It was. Matt Weeder's beef was that he felt like it was a different zone for the two teams. He felt like the Cubs pitchers were getting that pitch, and the Nats pitchers weren't. You know, he's hearing guys frustrated come back to the dugout all day. He thought some pitches. Should have been the same for both teams and I think his last words were do your job and he got thrown out of the game but the guy that never gets thrown out of the game was frustrated because it wasn't fair in his opinion. Still two and two on Goodwin and one other pitch sequence he referenced Weeders had doubled he was actually at second base so he had a real good look as the runner at second and a pitch to Goodwin that was called a strike and that's one that I think stuck in his mind for right. the next four innings. And Chad Whitson you're looking at was the home plate umpire I said triple A guy. Goodwin down swinging to begin the game. Career strikeout 2001 for John Lester. I'll say this. I like the fact that Matt stood up, but it wasn't the difference in the game yesterday. I don't think it was that influential. Uh, 
Howie Kendrick has had a good series and since joining the Nationals 455 10 for 22 in seven games. He's had the knack for the first inning hit on this road trip. Getting on in front of Harper. It's the cutter. Lester in his third season with the Cubs signed a six year deal prior to 2015. Last year was the runner up to Max Scherzer in the Cy Young voting. 19 and 5, 244 ERA. This year the numbers not quite as good, 8 and 6, but the ERA up about a run and a half, 396 coming in. Two to Kendrick with the fastball. Hey, just showing him out there to get back in with the cutter now. I mean, just show him one pitch away so he's not pull happy. But usually, John Lester's pitch with two strikes is that cutter down in or the curve. There's a cutter. Too far in. Cubs and Brewers. Milwaukee kept pace with a shutout win last night. So it's a heck of a race with a third of the season to go. Just foul oh, everyone, by Bryant. Everyone's saying it's going to be Cubs Nats in the NLDS. And if I'm the Brewers in Milwaukee and I'm hearing all this talk this weekend, I'm taking it personally. I mean, they're only a half game back. They're playing decent baseball. The Cubs, by all rights, with their talent and their ability, should win the division. But way stranger things have happened, so don't count out the Brewers yet. They've got seven head to head meetings to go. Kendrick down swinging back to back strikeouts for John Lester. Meanwhile in the National League East standings. Marlins lost last night so Nationals maintaining that 13 game lead and they'll welcome Miami to town tomorrow for four. I mean 82 and 80 could win the division so if the Nats just won what 18 more games. Because it looks of the like the last 54, I like their chances. <laughs> no one else is going <laughs> to play 500, it looks like. Harper one for four with a homer in his career against Lester. Went deep yesterday in the first inning off the scoreboard and right. And lefty sitting just 192 against John Lester since the start of the 2016 season. Low cutter, one and one. And he struck out 33% of the lefties he's faced this year. 40 for 118 before Brian Goodwin. So I guess all in all, he's tough on lefties. Yesterday against John Lackey. 28th homer. A high far one off the scoreboard, and that's before Lackey really. Pinpointed his command with that fastball away, yanked it across the plate, and Bryce was ready for it. Fouled two off, got the third one, hit it far. And Lester strikes out the side, wicked curve, puts Harper away. Eric Fetty will take the hill for the second time in the major leagues.
by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. And by the Virginia Lottery, look for the game of the summer, the Corvette and Cash Scratcher from the Virginia Lottery. Nationals go out in order in the top of the first, and the first chance for the Cubs as they look at Eric Fetty, and we'll check out their lineup. John Jay, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, his major league debut, that triple was against Levon Hernandez when Rizzo was a Padre. Contreras, Schwarber, half his first start of the series. Hayward, Baez, and Lester. Here is our look at Eric Fetty and what he threw in his first start. Yeah, two seam fastball average 94 his first start. Slider 82, change up 88. He'll run the fastball in on righties. He'll backdoor it to righties and he'll front hip it, meaning throwing right at lefties and run it back. So major league debut on the 30th against the Rockies. Seven runs on 10 hits in four innings, three strikeouts, two walks. And he starts Jay with that fastball. Good first year as a Cub for Jay. Who platoons out of the outfield with Albert Almora. He started all three games with the Nationals going with righties. Fetty a quick tempo gets ahead one and two. Pretty cool place to start your first road game, huh? And another lineup test for Eric Fetty. And he starts his outing with a strikeout. So nobody's put it in play yet. Lester strikes out three, and Fetty answers with one. At this rate, we're going to be back in D.C. in about 15 minutes, so we'll see you in a, in a few. Eric Fetty working quick, throwing strikes, keeping the ball down, which you have to do. Still day here at Wrigley. I think, you know, when it's still like this, maybe the most dangerous. When it's blowing out, yeah, but when it's like this, it plays super small. Fetty had a a rough first inning last Sunday first three men reached. Now Fetty's going to go ahead and throw the pitch good job Bryant wanted time didn't get it Fetty hesitated kept on throwing it and Bryant is not going to be happy about that. I'm telling you we'll see you in a couple minutes. He is ready to go locked and loaded and he finished his wind up did you see that he did the the Johnny Cueto pause at the top he just added well, that right there. Yeah realizing that Bryant was giving up the pitch. Yep. Good job. Maybe he incorporates that now. Conventional delivery and he gets ahead with a slider. I mean I wasn't kidding about his last start. I liked what I saw and it's hard to say well he gave up 10 runs on seven hits or seven runs on 10 hits. <laughs> and he said he had good stuff but he did. He, yeah. he, the body language he was fearless. Going after guys and you know had trouble putting the Rockies hitters away with his secondary stuff. But. There were a couple occasions in that start though FP where he had. It bases loaded, no outs, gets a double play, limits damage. Did that twice. Yeah, if I didn't like his stuff, I just got real quiet. You wouldn't hurt anything. I, I liked what I saw. Change up. Bryant doesn't chase. And Fetty was optioned while the Nats were in Miami, but with Gio Gonzalez to the paternity list, Fetty brought back to the active roster. See, but this right here is what happened last time. He, he would get ahead of Nolan Arenado, Charlie Blackman, all the big boys, and had trouble with that putaway pitch, whether it was an out or a strike. It's working with Weeders for the first time. Lobatone caught his first start to short. Defoe lays back on it, has to hurry, and Bryant a little gingerly threw the bag there. Looked like he had a bit of a misstep as he hit first base. But remember he had the trouble with third base at Nats Park on the pop up he caught it he rolled his ankle came out of the game and then this got weird Wilmer sat on this ball which was a mistake. And that last step and I'm trying to think what is his right ankle at Nats Park I think it was. It was on a pop up and he is just innocently taking a side step and rolled it on the bag. He can really run and anytime you sit on a ball that deep it's short it's going to be close at first. And speaking of short again the Cubs are carrying a three man bench. So they are short if Bryant has an issue. Defoe laying back in the ball and Bryant hustling it out. He had the misstep at the end. Rizzo bunting against the shift. Rendon trying to throw him out and he does. Anthony Rendon 
takes a bunt hit away from Rizzo. Remember that happened against Fetty. Carlos Gonzalez bunted for a hit. But this a, time Rizzo denies. Yeah, what a play. Vic Carapaza and as the Cubs take the field they do so without a third baseman that spot is vacant right now Chris Bryant who went awkwardly into first base has still not reemerged and there is not a substitute out there yet so well perhaps he's getting some treatment Joe Madden said I got to see and he kept saying I got to see to Vic Carapaza now Carapaza walking over to talk to Dusty Baker all eyes on the tunnel right now in the Cubs dugout. The extra lean and the lunge and hit that corner of the bag and rolled it a little bit. So could they possibly be trying to just tape that up? I think they're seeing if he can go. Well, if Joe Madden kept saying, I got to see, I got to see, he has a short bench. But how long do you give him? Well, it's fine. You want to ice your own pitcher, that's fine. Well, it's not like it's a pitcher where if you replace him, you get as long as the new pitcher needs. Well, when you've won a World Series, you get as long as you want. I guess. I mean, I believe it's t a 24 hour rule, so <laughs> until this time tomorrow, <laughs> you have a chance to put your third baseman on defense or not. I hope he's okay. It's bad for the game if a guy like Chris Bryant is hurt. He said a, a, he had the, the rolled ankle in D.C., and here he comes. Limping. He rolled the ankle in D.C. and missed a couple of games. Then he had the, the finger sprain in Atlanta. That still hampered him a little bit. He missed one game. And now he's in there. You know, not the time of the lineup, FP. We talked about possibly the bunting on Lester. He would certainly think about testing Chris Bryant at some point. That'd be cruel and mean and awful. And I would do it in a second. I speak sarcasm. No, I would do it in a minute. Hit me for a hit. Nationals trying to put it in play. Lester fan three in the top of the first. Two and zero. Oh. Confirm that is the same ankle he rolled in D.C. Certainly, if, if Bryant could not play, Joe Madden would take him out, but he did not want to have to make a substitution defensively in the second inning. With Addison Russell placed on the disabled list prior to the series, they have three reserve players on their bench. You've got a guy in Ben Zobras who can play anywhere. And 
Zimmerman never swings the bat draws a walk. So three strikeouts and a walk how the day starts for John Lester. Well if it's any indication of today's game at the major league level this should be a homer. Strikeouts three, walks three and results. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Murphy had two of them in game one of the series. And poked in the air to left, and it'll land for a hit. So Murphy moves Zimmerman up to second, a walk and a single, and the Nationals are in business in the top of the second. Well, there goes a no hitter, Daniel Murphy style in Chicago. There's the Wade Boggs swing with the helicopter finish. That wasn't Wade Boggs, I don't know who it is. Beautiful swing, first and second, and that's in business here in the second. Are five for nine in the series. Rendon trying to get off the Schneid, but a productive offer with a couple of sack flies in the walk. First and second, nobody out. This would be a perfect time to drag one, and the worst thing it becomes is a sacrifice. I've seen Anthony do it a few times. Rips it foul. Her ball was up. Big to score first today. Got a young kid on the mound, second major league start, hostile environment. Get him a lead, maybe he relaxes a little bit, but he was impressive in the first. We had to go to break, but how about the play Rendon made? Coming from shortstop on the bunt. Yeah, not surprised, but just the angle he had to come in at a 45 across the field going toward the Cubs on deck circle, throwing across his body to get Rizzo. Rizzo thought he had a base hit. I'll show it to you again. Look where he's coming from. He saw him square and he broke before he actually bunted it. Did you see that? But it firm enough. For Anthony to get to it quick enough to get the other Anthony running to first. It was Anthony on Anthony crime. Rizzo probably figured he just had to get it down to get ahead. To center. Zim back to tag. Jay has it. Zim's going to try it. And the throw loses steam, and so the Nationals have him at the corners. Productive out for Rendon. That is a great read by Ryan Zimmerman. It wasn't deep enough. You know why tag watch John Jay. As soon as he see him go back on the ball right there, those three steps, his momentum's going toward the warning track, and now he has to gather to throw. If Jay's coming in for that line drive, no way Ryan Zimmerman tags up and gets to third with one out. As soon as Ryan saw him retreat, he said, I'm going. Fantastic base running by the Nats first baseman. So he's at third for Weeders. You look at the 244 average, he's hit 279 right handed. A lot of history against Lester, former Oriole against the former Red Sox, and here it is. So Weeders sees him well. Like Matt Weeders, right handed swing a lot. I think he's better from this side. Check swing roller, tries to leg it out. The out at second and the double play at first. So the Nationals unable to cash in on the game's first scoring chance. Inning and a half. Nothing, nothing.
second big league start and getting another tough test today in this ballpark against a good hitting Cubs team. I talked to pitching coach Mike Maddox earlier today about Fetty. Asked him what he'd like to see Fetty improve upon from his first start to his second one here today. He said that his last time out he started out throwing three pitches, but he became a two pitch pitcher way too soon in that outing. He said the idea, the idea today to continue to use all his pitches. Maddox did like that Fetty came at the Rockies last time, faced a good hitting team, but wasn't afraid. So he said the two keys today for the young right hander attack like he did last time and use all his pitches. Thank you very much, Dan. The Coons.com sideline report over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. So far, so good from his first inning of work. As he retired, the Cubs 1 2 3. And whether Fetty was talking about being relaxed, confident, last night, instead of just sitting around after the day game in the hotel room, he took in a soccer game. He was a big time soccer standout in high school. He was all state. He went and watched an MLS game. He's a buddy on the Chicago Fire. Yeah, you think about playing in college, actually, and he chose baseball. He played basketball and football at first, then switched to soccer or baseball. Really feel this position. Doesn't like to use his hands very much because of soccer. And he's got a red card in his back pocket. Just in case. Just in case. Contreras, a homer, three RBIs yesterday. Good changeup. Real good changeup. Contreras, all geared up 2 1. Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast will show you the changeup. Digging the tempo, I'm digging the strikes. Full count on the Cubs catcher. Will be followed by Schwarber and Hap in the bottom of the second. Schwarber back in the lineup. Three two change up. The pitch he's really worked on. He threw it 23 percent of the time his first start but to have confidence to throw it three two. And even two one. Eighth pitch to Contreras. And he got him on the breaking ball. Second strikeout for Fetty. Both have come looking. One on a fastball, this one on the breaker. Well, I like what Matt Wieters with, is doing with him right now. He's pitching backwards. What's that mean? Well, 2 1 change up. Contreras looking fastball. And then a 3 2 curveball, Contreras looking fastball. And he mixed in another change in there somewhere along the line, too. So he's throwing off speed in hitters counts. It's enough to make your pitching coach drink. He likes it. Schwarber appeared yesterday as a pinch hitter and struck out. Schwarber at 192 spent a couple of weeks in the minor leagues and was not up when the teams met in D.C. 1 0 slider. Throwing all three for a strike. And a high fastball called a strike. Well, they're all talking to the dugout right now. Team with John Jay, Chris Bryan, Anthony Rizzo. They're they're trying to figure out Fetty. You know, you can watch video and see the scout report until you get in the box, you don't know. So they're probably all sitting there going, What does he have? Is it moving? What's his fastball doing? What's his change up look like? Do you see anything? Ooh. And even a guy like John Lackey, who you just saw on the top step, maybe trying to pick something up for his teammates. That was a good pitch. Ooh. 
And this time he gets the call with a tailing 96 mile per hour fastball. All three strikeouts have been looking. Well, he, he's got you guessing right now. He's throwing off speed at fastball counts. He's throwing fastballs at off speed counts. And you see the Cubs hitters, they don't know what's coming. He's locking them up. And it's A, because he's executing, B, because Matt Weeders put down some good fingers right now, not letting the Cubs just tee off on heaters. Rookie against rookie. Ian Happ, who can play all over. Giving Zobris the day at second base and over the leaping Defoe for the Cubs first hit. Defoe tried to climb the ladder couldn't get quite high enough. The inside out swing first pitch fastball just kind of muscles it. Over Wilmer's head and don't forget Ian Happ can run. Came into yesterday's game stole a base. And rose a little heck out there. Six stolen bases. He's been caught three times, so got to keep him close. Hayward struck out three times yesterday in his 0 for 4. Side and pass the diving Murphy. Half does not challenge the arm. So the Cubs, who were not having success deep in counts, have had consecutive hits on first pitches. Yeah, right where Matt Weeders wanted it, fastball away. Jason Hayward just went out there and hooked it in the hole. This situation where you don't have to throw Javier Baez a strike. Yeah, John Lester can hit a little bit. But we've seen Javier Baez in this series with less than ideal strike zone discipline, I guess is a nice way to put it. He is swinging and not always at strikes. I see some sliders away and maybe some change ups early. Is going to come out. I think they forgot what sign they're using. Saw him step off, and I was wondering. Weeders went through that set real quick, and when you haven't worked a lot with a pitcher before, whatever the indicator is, whatever number sign they're using with the sequence and a runner on second, they figured it out. Outside of perhaps an appearance in spring training or two, they have not worked together. Weeders doesn't even put down a sign. <laughs> Slider makes it one and one. Hap had the humpback liner for a hit and then Hayward a ground ball through the hole. Max Scherzer after Fetty departed that game on Sunday they, they were right next to each other on the bench with Max imparting his words of wisdom. Gets the call with that change up Baez doesn't agree. Keeping it down regardless, a good pitch. And with two strikes, will Baez expand? Not that far. Yeah, not that much.
But got him set up for the slider down the way. We've seen him swing through that pitch a bunch of times in this series if they want to go there. They go in and a base hit. Half scores, one nothing Chicago. Well, I kept the pitch down, but you know Baez is swinging, and you didn't have to throw him a strike yet, or at all, really, with the pitcher on deck. It maybe got a little too much play. You know that's hit right Wilmer Defoe you're not saying a word like hey good pitch got the ground ball just found a hole and one nothing Cubs. Three straight hits in the game's first run. Breaking ball to Lester who started his major league career 0 for 66. A major league record. But since coming to the NL, he has 16 hits in a homer. He was just just saving them all. The first multi-hit game last start. 3 in the inning so four strikeouts but the Cubs a run on three hits and they have the lead here in game three. Plus memberships are on sale right now. You can guarantee the best available seats for the 2018 regular season. Plus, you get access to 2017 postseason tickets, 2018 All Star tickets, including the All Star game, the T Mobile Home Run Derby. So visit nationals.com slash 2018 today. Cubs grab a run in the second inning and lead one to nothing. It's time for this moment in history brought to you by University of Maryland, University College. Cy Young on this date in 1890 made his major league debut. He would finish with 511 wins. Max is chasing him. He would go on to win his own award that year. <laughs> Max has a couple of size and maybe on his way to a third. Wilmer Defoe leads off. First ball swinging to center. Jay deep and uh, can't get it. It's by him into the Ivy. By the time he tracks it down, Defoe is digging for third. 
He's going to go in with a head first dive. So Jay playing shallow, lunging back for it, and Wilmer Defoe with a leadoff triple, his third triple of the year. Little guy's got pop. Foot down early, little inside out swing, and John Jay had a good route on this. Watch the top of your screen, he got a pretty good jump. And I lost sight of the ball when he reached. I thought he might have robbed Wilmer, but just out of his reach, and Wilmer hustling all the way around. Watch Wilmer run, he can fly. Helmet comes off because he likes Bryce. And a leadoff triple. Here to start the third. Eric Fetty will have the chance to try to bring in the tying run. Remember Wilmer's head came off on the stolen base the other day. He's got the he needs a chin strap. <laughs> That's a good swing. Fetty in the minors this year had one hit 13 at bats. You can poke one through the infield. Here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. David F.P. along with Dan Colco. Finale of this series and the road trip. You surprised Joe Madden has his infield in in the third inning? Not with the pitcher up. You think he'll move him back if he doesn't drive him in? We'll see. If he drives him in, though. I understand the reason. He's, uh, I don't want to tap her to second base and make it a tie ball game with the pitcher in. One and two on Fetty. It's even. Fourth strikeout for Lester. So now we'll see what Joe Madden wants to do with Goodwin coming up. Leaving him in so far. Could be a compliment to the stuff he's seeing from Eric Fetty. So now, if you're the Nationals, do you have the contact play on? Absolutely. Good speed at third. Up to Wilmer to get a nice lead and go as soon as he sees down angle. Wide strike to Goodwin. Left handed pitcher, third baseman a little off the line. He can get a, a nice lead. Blocked up the line, so Defoe has to stay put. Pretty good block right here by Wilson Contreras. Chest protector, mask off, look at the runner, and chase him right back to third. Goodwin tries to deliver the tying run. Keeping it away. And this serve to left. Defoe breaks back to the bag of the ball. Dropped in left field by Schwarber. And so Defoe will score. It's tied at one. Schwarber racing in on the ball. Defoe was going back to tag. And he was able to score once the ball was dropped. Now Wilmer broke home first, hit the brakes, and went back to the bag. So this was going to be interesting as Schwarber catches. See those two jab steps? Yeah, I think he would have made it, but it looked like Schwarber took his eye off it, wondering if Wilmer was going to tag. Watch him look up. Well, I guess he didn't check that. He just missed it. Converted catcher, not known for his defense. Single. I think they scored that a hit. He'll take it. So the Nationals cash in on the leadoff triple. As Kendrick stands in to right, Hayward near the wall has room. 
two down Harper's chance. Hey Davey telling Brian Goodwin hey here's what we're going to do. You talked to him earlier Dave he said just get your regular lead against Lester because Contreras can snap throw behind you. We all know John Lester doesn't throw over to first. But there's been 12 stolen bases against Lester this year and 11 caught stealing yep. so he's tightened up that whole thing. And I think the catcher Wilson Contreras has everything to do with that because if you get that monster lead he'll snap throw behind you. Well, Davies point was if you're going to get the monster lead you have to go. Because. You're not going to be able to get back on the snap throw. And Lester's super quick to the plate. So if you do get out there and you go first move. Well if you do get out there you have to go first move. The one time he picked off he stepped back. And basically did a little side flip. He's not going to raise his leg and throw over. So you can go on first movement. He gets fam from St. Louis. He had a huge lead. Anthony Rizzo was at first base, waving to him to throw it over, almost like when your kids are little and you want them to jump in the pool. Like, come on, Dad's got you. Just throw it over here. I'll pick it and tag him. And he finally did. Fairly normal lead for Goodwin. Maybe a little bigger than normal now. It's going. We should. Well, and if you're going to do that, you've got to get back. Harper fouled the pitch, so it didn't matter. Let's go inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep and Harper's standings in the National League. Moved into second. He's had an outfield assist in each game in the series. He trails only Billy Hamilton of the Reds with 10. A run in for the Nats. They've tied it up. And good off speed there from Lester. Goodwin's lead brought to you by StatCast, powered by AWS. That's about where he's been for most of this at bat. He'll cruise out another half a step. There he goes 13 14 and running Contreras the throw is off target and so Goodwin gets the stolen base. Fourth of the year for Goodwin and with a full count the Nationals have a runner in scoring position. And not the best jump but a good pitch to go on Contreras had to kind of dig it out backhand side and then throw so. Nice Harper with a chance to put his ball club ahead. Nice job by Brian Goodwin getting in scoring position with two strikes and two outs. Full count. And he got him again. Second time Lester strikes out Harper. Nationals get the tying run. And after two and a half, it's even. Zero to one three zero as we go to the bottom of the third. Big Ten alumni from across the DMV show your school pride.
during big time night at Nationals Park. Don't you think you should have to bring your diploma to this, Dave? I, I feel like you should show your diploma that you went to a Big Ten school. On Thursday, August 10th, enjoy Nats Marlins. Take home a Big Ten koozie. Visit nationals.com slash special ticket. Big Ten night or Big 14 night, whichever you prefer. That's our view from center field looking in on it. That cloud has been here since about 1230 and hasn't moved. It's drizzling at the start of the game, but we've been dry for a while. Strange weather in this series. It was like October on Friday. Yesterday was beautiful. Today kind of in between. I always felt like this is perfect day game weather when you had clouds. And you didn't have to worry about the sun. See the rotation on the ball. The lights are kind of taking effect here. No shadow issues for the hitters. There's no wind today. I mean this is a perfect day to play baseball here if you're a player. Just missing the inside. Hook foul. Let's go deep inside the numbers and talk about Eric Fetty, who is 24 years of age and the teammate of Bryce Harper in high school and went the college route at UNLV. And Tommy John surgery has come back to put up good numbers in the minors. This is second big league start and he's going to retire John Jay for the second time. This one on the unassisted play by Zimmerman. I think they have slot machines in the hallways in high school there. I mean for the teachers. <laughs> I mean they're everywhere in Vegas. You, know, you get off the plane there. The first thing you see. Yeah slot machines right there. So but the people who live there actually go. To the strip. They do? No, do they? I don't know. I don't think so. No. Another Vegas product. Play some good baseball out there. Brian a little hobbled after his first at bat. And he's going to have to test it here. Fetty slipping, and it's off the glove. Boy, his foot gave way, or he may throw him out. The Cubs have had three of those swinging bunt hits in the last game and a half. It's amazing how good your ankle feels when you're smelling a hit. Chris Bryant been lipping all over the place and then he swings and sees a hit. Eric Fetty we talked about what a good athlete is. He still almost made the play and how about Ryan Zimmerman. Diving for this to keep Chris Bryant at first. This might have been a runner on third and one out. Had Ryan not stopped this or slowed it down. Watch Zimmerman tried to stay in the bag then he comes off late. Good effort by Fetty. They want time for Bryant's got to put on the. Well, that's from that finger sprain from a couple of weeks ago on a head first dive into third. He was fortunate he only missed one game. You know whenever Chris is ready to play we'll play. <laughs> New rule. New rule. If you're the reigning MVP. Hey you're, you're playing on my time. Cubs have a longer flight than Nationals after the game. They go to San Francisco. Zerman to second. Out there. Defoe's return. Out there. Double play. Nicely turned. 3 6 3. And Zim will lead off the top of the fourth in a 1 1 game. Well, good feed to Wilmer. Hustles back to get the bag. And a clutch double play by the Nats.
for those who haven't seen it yet, I've started asking Nationals hitters about their bats, why they use that model, what size they use, a variety of different questions. Next up, Ryan Zimmerman, who uses a Louisville Slugger C353, 34 and a half inches on his bat, 32 and a half ounces. Used to use 33 and a half ounces, but dropped an ounce within the last year. I asked him why he did that. He smiled. He said, I'm getting old, man. An ounce matters. He said he used a ton of different models early on in his career, but he's used this one since 2008. It's actually Adam Dunn's model. Used it one day when Dunner was on the team and just stuck with it since then. He's experimented with a couple other manufacturers, but they just haven't been able to replicate this model either in terms of the handle thickness or the weight distribution. So for the last 10 years or so, guys, the Louisville Slugger C353. Thank you, Dan. The Coons.com sideline report over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. And heard Dan mention Adam Dunn. When Dunn was here in 2009 FP, he actually suggested Zimmerman go to a heavier bat at that stage of his career. And he had a big year. And as Dan pointed out, now he's gone a little bit lighter as he's gotten older. Just a feel thing, whatever feels good in your hands. You pick up a bat in the dugout in the clubhouse and you just kind of hold it and you say ooh, let me try this then you give it a test drive in BP and then decide if it's game worthy. And Dan did that I think with Brian Goodwin earlier and he got a base hit so if Ryan gets a hit here he has to do one of these every day for somebody. Pressure's on Dan. Two and two. Sometimes your model that you use all the time gets stale. You just feel like, eh. Grab somebody else's, it gives you a different look, a different feel, different balance where the weight is. And Lester with strikeout number six. He's had a good curveball working with the Nationals chasing it in the dirt. Let's go inside the numbers, brought to you by Jeep. Since he debuted with the Red Sox in 2006, he's been very durable and very successful. He threw a no hitter against Kansas City in 2008. Got that one over the corner, apparently. Oh and two. They tried to serve another one to left, didn't it, with that swing? Mercedes Benz will show you the pitch. And on the curve, he's got strikeout number seven. Order the Max Scherzer special at PapaJohns.com. Get 31% off all pizzas with the code Scherzer31. 10% will be donated to the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy. The Nationals have not announced any starters for the Marlins series, but hoping that Max will get the ball. Potentially could have had the Scherzer Lester matchup. But with the next spasm and only one inning pitched on Tuesday, Max getting some extra time. Which you can take when you have a 13 game lead. Well, I asked you off the, the top of the broadcast, FP, about any, any sort of meaning for this series if they play in October, who wins the season series. But the one thing from the national side for this series, the Cubs have not faced Max, they've not faced Strasburg, they've not faced Geo. I don't think so. I mean, the only meaning will be for highlights for TV shows. I mean, because and Ooh. the three guys you mentioned in October, and the Cubs have to get to October. So do the Nats. I mean, 13 game lead, but the Cubs are fighting it out with the Brewers. So don't count the Brewers out. I think the Cubs are way better than the Brewers, but stranger things have happened. Lester got a generous call on the 2-1 and takes advantage, getting a fly ball to shallow right. And it's a 1 2 3 inning through the middle of the order. We go to the bottom of the fourth. That's one Cubs one.
Nationals baseball is brought to you by the all-wheel drive RAV4. Toyota, what drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. You should go down to the uh, the river walk. Your time here, your four days here. What a great place to go walk. I did not. Scared I would fall in, and that wouldn't have been good in my condition. I like when they paint that river green for St. Patrick's Day. That's cool. Contreras, Schwarber, and Hap. Fetty a run allowed in the third in the second inning, three straight hits. Four strikeouts, no walks here in his second big league start. Contreras chasing strike one. Left side and foul. And they make some plays, the ball boys down here. The ball dude down the first base side made two yesterday. That was a tough carom off the wall. One and two. Yeah, Contreras first time on a three two slider. To deep left. Forget about it. Home run for Contreras, second in the series. This one shot out of a can. I think it was a changeup from Eric. And he knew as soon as he hit it, down and in, right into the turbo zone. He was swinging for a fastball and just caught it out front. And that went over everything on the Waveland, I believe. There was a fan in the last row that tried to catch it, and I think it went over his head. The guy in the beige shirt, right there. Nice try, buddy. I think it hit the pole oh, behind did. him. It did. It, it, it would have been on Waveland. I'll tell you what, Contreras is some kind of talent. I don't know if you're on. The opposing team, if you like how he goes about it, but he can really play. He's given them some punch in the cleanup spot since he's moved there. And what a home stand he has had. Two homers, six RBI game on Thursday, so four homers in the last four games. And ten runs batted in. Fetty's got to regroup. First home run he's allowed in two starts. He's behind three and one. The changeup works here if you like it because this guy's going to be swinging for the fences too here in this count for a heater. He got one, it was early. Draws the walk. I, I think the one thing you look for in young pitchers is how they deal with adversity, especially on the road. You know, when the crowd starts to get into it, you make a mistake. Can you turn the page and get past that mistake and refocus 
and do your thing. And I think that's the biggest test for any young player, pitcher, position player. When things start to go south a little bit, how do you respond? And I guess we'll all see right now. Cap had the first Cubs hit and scored their run in the second inning. And they had a string of three straight hits. Good pitch. I mean, it's hard to put it into words what happens as a player when you're out there and things start to go wrong just a little bit. You know you're on the road you hear the crowd. You're thinking I'm on TV. You know, everybody's watching my teammates and it just it's like it starts to go spin cycle real quick in your mind and the, the good ones. You know through experience the veterans are able to stop that slow it down block it out reset. That's so easy to say up here and so easy to do down there. I mean, a guy like Max Scherzer, who's been around, to see him take that big, long stroll around the mound, kind of get the rosin bag, step off, reset, get back on there, take a deep breath. Here we go, let's start over again. It was just one pitch, and that's what you have to tell yourself. It was just one pitch. And Weeders got nailed. You hear it? Backswing. Well, here it is. Listen to it. Oh. Kind of in the mask. And the helmet. Tall catcher back there. And getting to the point about your teammates, Dave, the best way to win them over is getting out there and throw strikes, work fast. You remember when Joe Ross came up, that's what he did. Got stood on the mound, threw strikes, great mound presence, and everybody's like, this guy's not scared. And, and that's the test as a rookie that, that you have to pass with your teammates. Right side. Murphy to try to get the force. Defoe the stretch. He holds the bag. A good play to get one there and cut down the lead runner. Yeah, nice play by Murph going to his left. He saw that Schwarber had the jump, and that gave him an extra click to get the throw to Wilmer. And Wilmer did a nice job of holding the base. As Schwarber went Donkey Kong over the barrel right there, and it gave Daniel Murphy. An extra second to throw him out at second. The way to use that one. <laughs> no, I thought it reminded me of the place to love that game. And then if you held your hand up at the top of the ladder, the barrels wouldn't come down on your head. It's one of the greatest video game ever. I just didn't see how it applied to baseball, but now I know. Did you see? I mean, right there, he saw it. He jumped over the barrel. Kind of looks like Mario a little bit. <laughs> oh, and two on Hayward. Pulled one through the hole his first time. Two coming up. Check on half. Six steals, caught three times. Fetty in his first start was able to get a couple of double plays behind him, and he had one last inning. He 
Hayward fouls off the 0 and 2. Cubs are running the second, a run in the fourth. They have Baez on deck. He drove in their second inning run. Nationals a third inning run driven in by Brian Goodwin. Runner takes off a big jump on a ball and that one was stolen on the pitcher. Hap was running while Fetty was still holding the ball. And Weeders had absolutely no chance. They're trying to time him up and he left a little bit early trusted it kind of shuffle into the steal. You see that little hop at the end when his foot hit the base and he popped up. That's why I think in today's game you always touch the runner even if he beats it by a mile and just hold it on him just in case something pops off the bag and there's nothing in contact with the base. Two and two. I mean, he could beat it by five steps but just in case that the, the dirt's a little quick and you go past or whatever today just put your glove on him and hold it there until there's time called. I remember that happened to Turner once this year where he had the base stolen and he had gone in hand first and he took one hand off the bag and put the other hand on and for the second that he switched hands the glove was on him and they went to a replay and he was out. Yeah and do I love that. No I mean we're getting down to fractions of whether you're there or not but if that's today's game and, and you can gain an edge by it and get it out. Why not. And we've got him on the breaking ball. Fifth strikeout for Eric. Pretty nasty slider right here, right? Watch this. More like a hard curve straight down at 82. Kind of a slurvy slider. And Javi Baez is walked to get to John Lester. Well, they pitched to Baez with first and second and he drove in a run in the second inning, so this time first base open. And Baez continues to pile up the walks, FP. That's his 18th this year. How many? Ten? Ten intentional. Ten intentional? So he has more intentional walks than unintentional walks. He'd be the guy to decline it. So no, no, I don't want it. I want to hit. That'd be cool if you could. I think if you declined an intentional walk, you'd probably get drilled on the first pitch. Now take your base. Yeah, now take your base. You don't want to walk? Okay. Take this with you. He knows a few things about intentional walks. That'd have been a quicker series here in Chicago last year if they had that rule. Right. Two and one. Big spot here now, Fetty allowing the home run and trying to get out of the jam. Check swing and a shot off the screen in front of the Cubs dugout. And he got him. Good sinking change up. Six strikeouts for Fetty. Cubs take the lead though on the Contreras homer.
Stream Night presented by Good Humor. Good Humor something you won't hear on this broadcast. On Monday, August 7th, get $1 ice cream novelties and selected concession stands while supplies last. Visit nationals.com today and bring your sweet tooth. All right. Wilson Contreras home run gives the Cubs the two to one lead and it prompted quite a celebration FP. So off speed down Contreras got he saw Matt Wieter's reaction so this started in the Cubs bullpen. When they were in a rain delay with Milwaukee they realized the Brewers bullpen could see their put check out the owl on the top left. It's my favorite part. So they had a rain delay and they had a dance off with the Brewers bullpen because they have TVs down there and then it just became kind of an organic thing they do when they hit a home run. It reminds me of the Harlem Shake. Remember that uh -huh. that song when everybody go crazy at the drop but the owl in the back who, who that, travels around with an owl mask. I mean they had horse heads on down there. I mean these guys are out of control. But if I was stuck in a cage like they are for 81 games I think I'd lose it too. Leaders to third. Brian with all day. Lester settled into a rhythm after giving up the triple in the third inning. Hit by this man. So we see the initials P L A C T. John Lester's uncle just passed and he went to Notre Dame. And that means play like a champion today. You know the sign they all touch wow, before yep. they go on the field. So that's a tribute to John's uncle. Everyone's asking me on Twitter. There you go. Pretty cool. It's a nice tribute. One and one to Defoe. You know, Dan's report about bats. A lot of times, switch hitters use different bats from whatever side they're hitting on. You have a left handed bat and a right handed bat, just based on you have two different swings. And every is, is that common or is that occasional? It, it's player by player it's personal preference and on occasion you go up there with the wrong helmet on I think Wilmer did that once been there done that too. Up the middle and Wilmer is two for two. Wide turn he'll hold. Well, a triple and a single. Tell you, the more you watch Wilmer Defoe play, the more you like. Look at him go down and get that John Lester pitch off the ground almost and stay through it up the middle. So triple first time up. Knock up the middle second time. Let's see if Eric Fetty can move that would be tying a run along here. One sacrifice bunt in the minors this year. Bunt it to Lester. He thought it was low. They really charge hard from the corners here to avoid Lester having to field the ball. Which leaves them open to a, a slash, but you don't know if Eric Fetty handles the bat well enough to put that out. I don't even know if Dusty knows at this point. He's way up in the box, looks like he's bunting again. Got good wheels at first, just get it down. Unable to do it. As a sacrifice bunter, I always felt like the pressure was on based on the speed of the runner at first. If he was slow, I felt nervous. I had to get a perfect bunt down to get him there. If he's fast, you're relaxed, and it's all you knew is you have to get it on the ground, and he'll take care of the rest. And he chops it to the left side. The throw to first. And Fetty hustling down the line is out on a close play, so it's like a sacrifice. 
and he did slash it. Good job by Eric Fetty. We'll give you our PNC Minor League insights. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. The numbers for third base prospect Drew Ward with the Harrisburg Senators. Saw him in spring training. Big, powerful left-handed hitter. So tying run at second for the Nationals. Brian Goodwin, incidentally, just lost a hit prior to this inning. The ball he hit to Schwarber that was dropped in the third inning scored originally a hit. It's been changed to an error. But Goodwin gets credited with the sacrifice fly in the RBI. It's probably a decent change there. He doesn't lose the run batted in. Interesting. You know, you can't assume a double play. How can you assume a sack fly? How do they know that he would have made it home and Schwarber would well, have made a perfect throw? They tend to do that the other way. How do you can you assume that Schwarber would have made a perfect throw to throw him out? I don't know. And give the benefit to the offense. It's good for Brian. He doesn't get it that bad at least. And good one. He's not happy with that cutter that he thought was low. Well, he's the one that had some pitches called against him yesterday that I thought were balls. I don't land outside. You can reach that one if you're Brian. Out of play, one and two. So is the temptation here now to maybe expand away because that's been all series. They've been attacking him there and it's been called there. Yeah, I think Alex Avila did a nice job yesterday setting up and, and using it. But you have to be able to hit the target too. Going back out there to short. And Baez has his man. Nationals lead the tying run at second. Middle of the fifth, 2 1 Chicago. Has Eric Fetty fared his second major league start? I think real good so far. 73 pitches, 48 strikes. He struck out six Cubs. He's got a little help from his friends too. Watch the turn by Wilmer here. Flat footed, spread out. Sidearm throw back to first for a 3 6 3. And you see the change ups, been getting some big outs. Doing a nice job so far. Washington area Toyota dealers help children and their families by making a $37 donation to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Out on Lake Michigan, you need to take your sailboat out and enjoy the water. There's sharks in the lake here. Did you know that? No. I didn't either. I just made it up. Top of the order, third time, and a comebacker handled nicely. And Fetty bowls it on to Zimmerman for the out. There's been some good games in this series, and even though the Nats aren't at full strength, this would be a good series in October, don't you think, Dave? I'd sign up for it. Well, you yeah, are. But you wanted it full strength. You are signed up for it, <laughs> <laughs> and you will do it on the radio side. By the way, have you enjoyed your 
your road trip on TV. It's been been a lot of fun. You're doing a great job. And Thank I've you. Had great fun. to work with you. Bob is back tomorrow for the Marlins series. Good to have him back. Hope he enjoyed himself on his little break. Brian hobbled after grounded to short in the first inning, delayed the start of the second inning, and then legged out an infield hit, a swinging bunt in the third. 3 0. Might be swinging here. Weeders dropped it too, trying to frame it. Got the call. 3 1. Doesn't get that call. One out walk, second and third walk. One of those intentional. That, that was a good pitch. Rizzo out trying to bunt for a hit and the double play in the third. So these Cubs hitters getting their third look at a pitcher they're facing for the first time. This is where, this this where you change your look and make sure you don't fall into patterns if you're Eric Fetty. He's got all three pitches for strikes whenever he wants them, which has been impressive. But it's tough to cut through any major league lineup for the third time as a young pitcher, let alone one as good as the Cubs. Tailing fastball makes it one and one. See that pitch right there just shows he's not scared. Here, here's the guy standing in the box with 26 homers. He's a guy that likes to pitch in and loft it to right. And he goes right in there under his hands. And he is right on top, if not over the plate with those hands. Gets hit a lot. Breaking ball. Rizzo swings through it up. He is trying to hit one on the rooftop across street right here. Look at that swing. A mighty hack. Now he chokes up. Well, did he show his hand there? Said he went ahead through the pitch, sinking fastball. You saw Rizzo say, My fault, man. If you could read his lips right there. He called it late. It was granted late. Early in the game, remember, they, they didn't grant time for Bryant when he called it late or asked for it late. I think with two strikes. You get a more you get a little more lenient back there with that slap to Rendon juggles hits default for the out and a first for another double play turn it Wilmer five six three Fetty has turned two double plays in the last three innings and he's through five trailing by just a run.
Well, Eric Fetty and John Lester, good pitching matchup. 340th Major League start for Lester, second for Eric Fetty. Nationals right in the ball game, heading to the sixth inning with Kendrick Harper and Zimmerman to face Lester. Lester's handled this part of the order. Now he's eighth game with the Nationals. Soft line drive right at Baez one away. Washington D.C. Lexus dealers donate $250 to the Children's National Health System for the first 200 home runs hit by the Nats this season. Lexus experience amazing. Harper's next home run would be somewhat of a round number. He's looking for 150. He's at 149. You remember? Well, you don't remember, Dave. You. We've broken down Bryce's swing from the side and when his head's still the helmet doesn't come off and when he's getting a little bit violent toward the pitcher with his leg kick it does and it's been coming off again. How about Lester's plan of attack it's been heavy off speed is that. What does Harper look for here. Well you always have to be ready for his fastball but it seems like the out pitch to Bryce in this series has been slow in the dirt whether it's curveball change up slider. the line Schwarber makes the play. Let's check the Nationals in game box score. And Wilmer Defoe is delivered two of their three hits. Not a whole lot of traffic against Lester to this point. Defoe scored after his triple in the third inning. Kind of drifted with that stride. He's trying to correct himself on a take. You can learn a lot about yourself as a hitter when you don't swing, how you take pitches. I think a lot of times Ryan has to fight when he does that leg kick, his head going with the leg kick toward the pitcher instead of keeping it back. Go back toward us. When he does that leg kick and there's separation and he keeps his head still over his backside and he gets that drive in his swing, that's when he's locked in. Watch the head. That's not bad right there. Wrigley Field here in Chicago, Dave Jagler, FP Santangelo, Dan Colco. Series and road trip wrapping up. Nationals with a win would have a 500 trip. And the season series against the Cubs is all even. Three wins aside. Two outs and the base is empty, and Zimmerman takes ball two. Not chase that one. It was the strikeout pitch in the fourth inning for Lester against Zimmerman. Will it be playable? It looks like it will be, and it's handled in foul ground by the second baseman, Hap. 
Nationals go out in order, middle of the six, two to one, Cubbies. to the bottom of the sixth inning. Wilson Contreras, the difference in this one. Eric Fetty's been real good. We go to the fourth inning, Wilson Contreras gone. Looked like an off-speed pitch at 88 on the Geico highlights. Watch the guy that catches the ball. It ricochets back and it goes in his hot dog holder thing. Watch this. It's in his holder, I'm gonna hold it up. Wait, where's the ball? It's where the hot dog is, right there it is. <laughs> Showed everybody the ball, and that made me laugh during the commercial break. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. There he is. Break that down. The hot dog not there, but the holder was. Yeah. And the ball in the holder. Is, is that what you call it, a hot dog holder? Because during the break, I'm trying to think of what that thing is called. Is it? I mean. It's got to be the hot dog holder thing. That's a very technical name for it. It's the a, holder thing. It's the hot dog holder thing. The hot dog holder is a bun, but then you have to have a holder for the bun. And he's got another one. He's been a one man wrecking crew. 21 on the year. Fastball belt tight off speed last time and. You got a guy locked in like Contreras is sometimes you just avoid him. 441 feet for a second home run of the day is 21st on the year and the Cubs go up by two. Schwarber strike out and walk. He got hot against the Diamondbacks two homers six RBIs Thursday. Two run homer yesterday and two solo homers today. And against the Nationals this year in six games he's at five home runs. He had a big series at Nationals Park did Contreras. So they'll need a plan if they see him again. Go inside the numbers, thanks to PNC. And since moving up to the cleanup spot, and after the All Star break, he has exploded. It's 
this one's going to be on the roof. And then it comes back down off the roof. To left center. And back to back for the Cubs. Schwarber opposite field number 18 and it's four to one. This set cutting through a major league lineup for the third time, especially one as good as this is going to be a challenge for Eric Fetty. And it's something you learn the more you pitch on how to save some pitches, how to give them a different look the second and third time up. And he's learning on the fly right now. And she is flying here at Wrigley. I didn't think that one was going out. To the first row beyond the basket. They're going to send Weeders out here, maybe to stall. And Mike Maddox is going to come out. Let's look at the Cubs in game box score. Cubs now with seven hits. And the middle of the order has been doing the damage. He's handled the top part pretty well. Four, five, and six. Been a big part of it. And the Nationals bullpen busy for the first time. Oliver Perez hasn't pitched in the series. Being told it's called a hot dog tray, Dave. So a tray? Yeah, it's a hot dog tray. Paper. I like I like holder thingy. I like yeah. Until he hit the second home run, I did too. Fouls away the 1 1. Two and two. Check this out. So, this is way better than the hot dog holder guy. Kid in hand, bare hand. Kid's fine. Struck him out. So Fetty comes back after the two consecutive homers to get his seventh strikeout. One down the first baseline here a couple years ago that got kind of all kinds of play. A catch by a fan. I can't remember if there was a kid involved or not. I think there was. <laughs> Hungry. Yeah, now we eat it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for lunch. Under the glove. Hayward's thinking about two. He's going to try it. And the throw is way off the line. So that's a seeing eye double. He 
And not a bad pitch, got the ground ball. It looked like Daniel Murphy was thinking about doing the backhand throw of your shoulder on the run thing, and the ball just squirted under his glove, and Hayward hustling all the way for a one out double. And I think that's the way they're going to score it, and they did. Long strides, he could run, good hustle. Well, this is interesting. They're going to put Baez on with one out. Rather than pitch to Baez and Lester, they'll opt for Lester and Jay. So Baez gets the intentional walk. And probably if they get down to Jay, it would be Perez to come out of the pen. Or he may be coming out now. So it looks like the afternoon will be done for Eric Fetty. He'll go five and a third. Pitched very well, although the Cubs get him here in the sixth inning with the back to back homers. This will be a UPS store call to the bullpen. Need expert printing? The UPS store has you covered. Together, there's nothing we can't solve. Oliver Perez will come in to try to get the Nats out of it. Now it's time for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. The Dodgers 43 and 7 in their last 50 games. A milestone homer for a new Oriole Tim Beckham and Mike Trout. Well if he can get two hits today and he's 0 for 1 he would have a thousand before his 26th birthday. In the last 50 years only six have done it and guys who have been on that list a few of them in Cooperstown. Robin Yount, Ken Griffey Jr., Miguel Cabrera, the last to do it. So that would be exclusive company. Eric Fetty out after five and a third. He leaves a couple of men on. Eight hits, four walks, two intentional, seven strikeouts. And Oliver Perez will come in to face the pitcher, John Lester. A 35th appearance for Perez, 233 average against, two pitches, fastball 93, slider 80. Lester showing bunt. Missed it. Throw down to second. Now Hayward breaks for third, and they've got him hung up. Rendon chasing. And he falls down, missed the tag. And they get to Perez. They they called Hayward out. They called him out. I thought he missed the tag. Nationals went through with the play anyway and tagged him out. What did you see? I thought he got underneath it. Well, I couldn't see from here, but you know, the players will tell you because they kept playing. If you tag a guy, you don't keep the rundown going. And if Jason Hayward thought he got tagged, he wouldn't have kept running. They told you all you need to know before you even look at the replay. And I don't think you can challenge that because the play kept going. And high. they tagged him out eventually. Yeah. You... So watch this. He does the old okey doke right here, like the juke move, dive under the tag, not even close. He's not out of the baseline. And which umpire was that? Was that Ripperger? Yeah. He was pointing the whole time. I was watching the pickle go on. Watch the second base up to start pointing. Right here, watch the umpire. Pointing, he just kept pointing with his left finger like, you got him, you got him, this play's over. Hey, everybody, he's out. Look, he's out. And he really wasn't. 
But he really was, I guess. Eventually. So I, I guess they go they score that two six five if they say Rendon made the tag. So take away the one and the six in the rundown. That's the second out. That's a big out. With Lester missing the bunt. So now the bunt will be off. So a, a little teaching moment for younger players. The bunt has to get you to third. You see Hayward take that jab step assuming the bunt was going to get down. It's not incumbent on you as a base runner to get a good jump on a bunt. It's up to whoever's button it to lay down a good enough bunt to advance you. And so you don't have to be aggressive as a base runner right there. See the ball down and if you don't get the third it's not your fault. It's the guy that bunted yeah. not getting a good enough bunt down. As you were watching that replay I noticed Hayward was he trying to signal Baez to come into second. Probably. He's probably staying long enough to get the other runner in scoring yeah. position the trail runner. And he gets the strikeout. So. Oliver Perez comes in gets a pickoff and a strikeout. The Mazda do up for the top of the seventh inning. Daniel Murphy will lead it off against Lester and then Rendon and Weeders. With spitters, four to one as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Come as you are, as you were, as I want you to be. It's a 90s night presented by Budweiser on Friday, August 11th. At the ballpark, dress up and celebrate everything 90s. We're going to have a good night, a fun night. Enjoy a pregame concert featuring White Ford Bronco. These guys are good. Before you catch the Nats Giants game, visit nationals.com for more information. 90s night. Be there. Jason Hayward asking about why he was called out in that rundown play. It was the second out of the inning, and Oliver Perez got the strikeout, so the Nationals give up two in the bottom of the sixth. And as we head to the seventh, it'll be Murphy to lead off. Yeah, it was a little momentum change, maybe? You're looking at what could have been six to one. You get the throw behind, the pickle, the out. You strike Lester out, and you feel like. There could be a shift here. We'll see. As we get to the later innings, as if the Nationals can keep this one close, Joe Madden, the Cubs manager, indicated yesterday that Wade Davis is closer and his eighth inning setup man, Justin Wilson, would likely be unavailable. So he may ride Lester as deep into this game as he can. Good start to the inning as Murphy sends this one toward the warning track. He's going to try for two. And he's going to make it standing with his league leading 35th double. Momentum change, maybe? A beautiful swing by Hits. He has been thinking the other way all day today. Even his last time up, when he struck out, you could tell on his swings that he was thinking left center. So obviously, the game plan for Daniel Murphy. Is not to pull John Lesser, but go the other way. Beautiful swing, leadoff double here in the seventh. Let's see what Anthony Rendon can do now. Fly to center, fly to right. And 
0 for 7 here in Chicago. Cutter missing. I mean, down by three right here, you don't want to just give up your at bat and hit a 15 hopper to second. You're thinking drive it to right center, drive him in that way. If you miss, you know, get him to third, but think about getting yourself on too. And again, he tried the backdoor cutter. Drops in the curve for strike one. Yeah, you're looking fastball right here if you're Anthony Rendon. That's a pitch he wants you to pull. It's a get me over curve for a strike. Blasted toward the left field corner. Schwarber's not going to get it, and it's high off the wall. Murphy comes in to score. And it's back to back doubles. The throw gets through into right, and Rendon's going to end up at third. So it's a 4 2 game, and Rendon at third as Bryant threw wildly and ill advised with Rendon already at second. So Rendon's first hit of the series, his 73rd RBI, and here come the Nationals. Momentum swing? I don't know. Maybe the outside defense. Here you go. Forget moving him. I'm going to hit this one out almost. This got weird right away. Kyle Schwarber's got to throw this ball to second base. He might have had a chance at Rendon, and he just launches it to third for no apparent reason. And then Chris Bryant blindly throws it to right field, and Rendon advances to third. So that ball's got to go into second base initially, and none of that stuff after even happens. And that's probably what John Lester's thinking, too. So Weeders. Has a chance to pull the Nationals within a run. You don't want to kill Kyle Schwarber. He's out there for his bat, but he's had an adventurous day in left field. He knew as soon as he threw it, too. He put his hands in the air like, I should have thrown that to second. He knew immediately that's where the ball should have went. Talking to himself. Blocked by Contreras. Joe Madden, we talked about trying to get as much as he can out of Lester with his bullpen a little bit depleted. And that is just foul past third. Two and two on Weeders. Brandon Kinsler for the Nationals says the pitcher spot is likely to come up in this inning. Well, infield back. Obviously, if you're Matt Weeders, you want to get yourself on too, but anything up the middle here makes it a one run game. Staying alive. John Lester would love him to hit a ground ball to third. That's why you're seeing the cutters in. The only right handed batter, true right handed hitter on the bench is Adrian Sanchez. Full count. Leaders with 38 RBIs. A chance to pick up one here with Rendon at third and nobody out. Good rip. Heavy diet of cutters in this matchup.
Blasted to deep right center. Shea going back. And he caught it. Rendon scores. Weeders has to settle for the sack fly. Denied extra bases on a fine running catch by Jay. Well, this one had more hang time than Wilmer Defoe's triple, so he's able to get a good beat on it. And with the Ivy and the Bricks approaching, fully extended, so great at bat by Matt Weeders. You're thinking this is at least a double, and John Jay turns it into a sack fly. And that turns it into a one run game. If this was a game in October, this has been a good one here from Chicago. So it's Defoe, who has been on twice against Lester. Base is clean now with the first out of the inning. Did he check? He did. Tell you, Friday's game was a good one. Yesterday, he got Bryce Harper up in the ninth as the potential tie and run with two outs, and then today has been real good. Door cutter for a strike. Two and one. Pitcher spot. Do next, Adrian Sanchez. As we mentioned, the only right handed hitting pinch hitter available. Down and in, strike two to Defoe. Tried to bring it back a little bit to the corner. So a three and two as they set up in. Popped up. Jay has it. The last game these guys played at Nats Park last year, the extra inning game, I think Jason Worth had the walk off. That was one of the best baseball games I had seen in a long time. It was two heavyweights just going toe to toe, back and forth the whole game. Jason finally ended it, I believe, in the 11th with the walk off, but it was, I mean, taking Major League Baseball to a whole new level. And one of the top 10 games I've ever seen. And if that was an October game, it would have been a classic for the ages. Well, we could see that matchup in a couple of months. He was 12 innings. Sanchez batting for Oliver Perez. So a big spot here for Adrian, who is looking for his first pinch hit. He's 0 for 6. And 4 for 24 overall since being called up in late June. Set the scenario the Cubs may not have their closer, may not have their eighth inning setup man available today. And it's now one run game. It's the curve that have been so successful for Lester. Seven strikeouts, those all came in the first four innings. He's trying to finish off the seventh. Out of the right, Contreras, no play. Good catch, first row. No kid, just a catch. No hot dog thingy? No hot dog thingy. Nationals' upcoming schedule. Bob's back with you tomorrow night for game one with the Marlins, first of four. And then the Giants are in town for their only visit.
Everybody on their feet. They expect Max at some point in that series. Don't know when yet. This place. The 2 2. Full count. Lester has had to grind this inning. Some long at bats, Weeders and Defoe, and now Sanchez taking him full. The payoff. Foul away. Fighting. Pinch hit single for Sanchez puts the tying run aboard. Great at bat. Put a star by that one. 40,000 people on their feet cheering for strike three. You file a couple of pitches off, then you get this one to go right back up the middle, and I think that's going to do it for John Lester. Adrian Sanchez knocking him out of the game with a two out knock. Well, what an inning for the Nationals. John Lester is going to depart to a big ovation. And they're going to go to left hander Mike Montgomery for his first appearance of the series. So Lester departs. The Nationals have the tying run aboard, trying to make a terrific comeback. Presented by authority of the Washington Nationals, and it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Nationals have two on the board in the top of the seventh, and they have the tying run at first. Adrian Sanchez with his first pinch hit as a major leaguer, and he has knocked John Lester out of the game, and the Cubs will call on the left-hander, Mike Montgomery. A fastball cutter curveball change from Montgomery. Fastball 50% of the time at 92 miles an hour. And Brian Goodwin might see some curveballs. He throws them 25% of the time at 77. Mike Montgomery began last season with the Mariners. He was traded just before the deadline. He had never had a save in his professional career until he saved Game Seven of the World Series. Pretty good he came first. Out to get the final out. Pretty good first save. Pretty good. And it gets away, and the tying run will move to second. Contreras had to reach for it and couldn't come up with it. It's a huge 90 feet, a free 90 feet. Thank you very much. Setting up down the way. Didn't miss by that much. Is that pitch a strike? It's called a ball, but. You call a strike on me and it goes to the backstop. I'm getting thrown out of the game. Ooh, that one almost to the backstop. Down by Contreras. Got a snowball fight going on here with two pitches. <laughs> First one to the screen, and this one almost went to the screen. For 
first appearance of the series. Montgomery trying to dial in the strike zone. There he does. They scored that first pitch a pass ball. This is target by the more than the width of the plate. Either way, it has Sanchez at second. Looper to shallow right. Hayward coming on. He has it. And the side retired. Nationals will settle for two runs on three hits. It's stretch time here at Wrigley Field. It is brought to you by the Lexus RX featuring a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection standard by Navy Federal Credit Union proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years federally insured by NCUA and by visit Annapolis.org create your moment at visit Annapolis.org Two for the Nationals in the top of the seventh, answering the Cubs two in the bottom of the sixth. Makes it a one-run game again. And this will be a big inning of work for Brandon Kinsler to try to keep it a one-run deficit. At 48th appearance, you see the numbers. Two seam fastball slider occasional change. Fastball average in 94 this year. Starts John Jay with a sinker. Two to Jay. Cool seventh inning stretch. William H. Macy singing it next door to us just now. Nominated for an Academy Award in Fargo. Jurassic Park. Sounds shameless right now. That was cool. Got the crowd going. Forty one thousand forty seven. Here on a Sunday afternoon at Wrigley. And they've watched a good one. Kinsler's third appearance with the Nats. Lift to go up, and Jay fouls it down the line. Kinsler came on in the victory on Friday. Stemmed the Cubs' momentum. Chicago had pulled within a run. 
walk the first batter he faced and then got a pair of ground outs. Kinsler is just a strike throw machine, isn't he? The report he comes in comes after you. Yeah. Shallow left center. This may fall. Goodwin though robs him. Headlong diving grab on one that looked like it was going to fall. It did. Had flare, blooper, Texas leaguer, whatever you want to call it, written all over it. And Brian Goodwin out of nowhere selling out, folks. Watch this effort by the Nat Center fielder. Head first dive right off the turf. Little swim move at the end. Nice play, Brian Goodwin. And Brandon Kinsler appreciates it. And so do we. What a play. Just. Wow. Just in his glove. Bryant, an infield hit and a walk. Right on the corner. So join the Nationals on the road trip. Last day in Miami. Picked up in the trade on Monday. Fouled away. One and two. That's a driving sinker he throws. A lot of guys that throw a sinker have fade to it. The arm side fade. It runs in. But this is going down and in at the same time. So it's got depth to it. And he just drives it in there on a right hander. I mean, it's an impressive pitch. Try to pound Bryant to the inside. I mean, and that's what I'm talking about. Not just throwing the sinker, but getting it to a location with two strikes. There's not a whole lot you can do with this pitch if you're Chris Bryant. And it's right where Matt Weeder's set up down and in. And Tough to get the barrel to and tough to keep fair. Right back in there. Broken bat. Kendrick. Two away. Tough to get the barrel to. Let's go downstairs to Dan Colco. Dan? Dave, funny story for you on Brandon Kinsler, who is listed at six foot, but is probably a good two or three inches shorter than that in reality. He said that when he was unemployed a handful of years ago and was looking for an independent league team to sign him, he listed himself at six foot to try and make himself seem more attractive to prospective employers. It's stuck ever since then, so Brandon Kinsler, six foot in the books. Okay. Hey, you keep throwing like that. He's, He's a guard. You're six eight. I don't care. It's not going to be a forward or a center. Rizzo down a strike. A couple of double play ground outs for Rizzo. As Eric Fetty pitched him well. Strike two. You know, as a as a new player. I mean, you're always being evaluated by your teammates. You want to impress them. 
But if I'm standing behind Brandon Kitzler right now, I, I don't even care if the guy gets hit around. I like the way he's going about it. You know, he's filling up the strike zone. He's getting ahead. He's working quick. And there's going to be days when you don't get the job done, but if you're constantly throwing strikes, that's a fantastic way to endear yourself to your new teammates. You know, go out there, get it, throw it, be in the strike zone, let us play behind you and make some plays. Keep those guys busy on the infield. And for the one, two, three inning, the two, two to Rizzo. To 95 with that sinker. Trying to front hip him right here, start it right at him and freeze him. I think he's going to try it down and away. Rizzo has really cut down on his strikeouts. Over the course of his career. And this year more walks than strikeouts. Well, he kind of lowered his hands. You remember when he was a Padre, he had his hands real high and he was off the plate. And now he's got his hands nice and low, just kind of right in the strike zone. And, and the choke up, too. Definitely one of the few hitters in baseball with a two strike approach. See where his hands are close to the hitting zone. And that is just foul, and fortunately so as it went under the glove. He's in swing mode right now. You, you have a pitch to play with if you're Kinsler. You might be able to expand up and see if he'll chase something let or high. As a hitter, when you start swinging with two strikes and falling off a lot of pitches, sometimes it's hard to stop. Long at bat. Ninth pitch. On the way. And a base hit. Nice at bat for Rizzo, two out single. And that brings the man of the day to the plate for the Cubs, Mr. Contreras. And he gets a big hand. Those same pitches that worked to Chris Bryant will play right here to this guy, but you got to get it in there. And Anthony Rizzo with six stolen bases. If you don't pay attention to him, he'll steal. Readers puts down fastball in. And got in, jammed him. Who's going to take it? Default over the shoulder of the basket catch. A oh. little nonchalant, but he makes it. So the Cubs strand a man. Howie Kendrick will try to get us started as we go to the eighth. The Cubs leading four to three.
Zimmerman do up top of the eighth Nets down by one MLB.tv every night every device watch every out of market game live plus get a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions do apply visit MLB.tv for details. Nationals hoping for a rally here in the eighth inning against Montgomery who came on to get Goodwin stranding the tying run at second in the seventh inning. Well definitely a high leverage situation for Mike Montgomery. Probably this might be a, a spot for the newly acquired Justin Wilson but he's had a high pitch count load this homestand. Big curve there. Wilson pitched an inning yesterday. Through a ton of pitches so. They're opting for Montgomery through this part of the lineup. Quickly 0 and 2 on Kendrick. And they have Carl Edwards Jr. Maybe for Zimmerman, maybe for Rendon. Nationals have a the right left balance here in this part of the lineup. Meanwhile, Ryan Matson. For a good inning from Kinsler. And got him with the off speed. Okay, he turned one over there at 83. Let's see what he does to Bryce Harper. You'd imagine there's going to be a few curveballs in here. Fastballs away, curveballs. That's what they've been showing Bryce the whole series. Harper had four hits in the first two games. Well, today Lester held him in check. Strikeout in the first, strikeout in the third, and a fly to left in the sixth. Weakly toward and past the pitcher. Tough play, and Hap cannot make it. So Bryce Harper has his first hit of the day. And five the Nationals get one of those swinging bunt hits that the Cubs had perfected in this series. Once that got by the pitcher, and that hit written all over it. So tie and run aboard for the Nats. Good hustle by Bryce Harper. Smelled the hit all the way. I don't think even if Ian Happ fields this, he gets him. Helmet stayed on. Kept it on. And with Harper getting aboard, that's going to bring Joe Madden out. So he wants the righty righty matchup. So Montgomery goes two thirds. He'll hand it over to Edwards to face Zimmerman. Edwards Jr. momentarily. Give Mass and Nationals a like on Facebook so you never miss a moment of action. All along for exclusive Mass and All Access segments, giveaways, and breaking news, Mass and Nationals on Facebook. Big he is Carl Edwards Jr., 
25 year old and he has been tough to hit. 19 hits allowed in 44 innings, a 132 batting average against. Can be wild though, 29 walks. Yeah, he'll he'll sink the fastball, cut the fastball in the mid to upper 90s. Violent curveball to go with it at 81. Nationals got a run against him on Friday. It was a leadoff walk that led to a run. And he starts Zimmerman with a fastball off the plate. A little cutter. If you're Ryan and you're thinking that gap in right center right now, you, that's the right approach because the fastball is going to run away from you and it'll keep you back on the curveball. What's going to make the roof? Yeah, it's weird. You don't even think about Bryce Harper stealing anymore, but this would be the situation if you were thinking about it. It might work. I don't even think the Cubs are thinking about it. He has two steals this year, FP. Both came on the back end of double steals with Trey Turner. He does not have a big lead. Move the bat, they'll appeal. Nope. To center. Jay gets turned around and it's off the wall. Can Harper score? He's got the hold as the throw into the plate is held by Contreras. Jay got a little twisted and Zim with a booming double off the base of the wall at the 400 mark. Bryce read it well. He got to second. He had to make sure it got over Jay's head. And maybe that last catch he made had something to do with it. Watch Bryce top of your screen. Well, he'd probably lose him in the frame, but he had to stop at second till he knew for sure that ball was getting over Jay's head. And once it did, he was boogieing into third. And Bob Henley had to stop him, and Daniel Murphy just walked while we did the replay. So they load him up. They pass Murphy intentionally to set up the matchup with Rendon. Rendon faced Edwards on Friday and hit a sacrifice fly. And with the base is loaded one out that would do nicely here. And on June 29th these two squared off in D.C. and Rendon did more than hit a sack fly. Yeah high fastball that he got on top of and drove it out to left center. And Edwards will try to do that to you elevate the fastball but right now that's what Anthony Rendon wants. He's looking for something up there to drive. Heads up on the wild pitch here if you're Bryce Harper. Rendon RBI double last time up. And hit him. This game's tied. This game is tied on the hit by pitch. A first pitch curveball. And after loading the bases on the intentional walk, Edwards hits Rendon to tie the game. He kind of wore this, didn't he? Didn't get out of the way. Watch Anthony Rendon just kind of roll his shoulder into it, let the slow pitch hit him. And get the RBI. Backup curveball kind of slipped out of Carl Edwards Jr.'s hand, and the Nats will take it. Everybody advances 90 feet, and the stage is set for Matt Weeders to be a big time hero here on Sunday at Wrigley. He's checking out the the wound. Well, we we set this up, FP, that he did not have his eighth inning setup man or his closer potentially, and if the Nationals could keep it close, yeah. they had the chance, and they've pulled even. And now Matt Wieters will try to give them their first lead of the afternoon. And will bat left handed for the first time. Best arms in right. And to center. This is deep. Jay way back there at the wall. Grand slam. Home run number eight for Weeders makes it eight to four. And he has stunned this crowd here at Wrigley Field. That 
was clutch. I'll tell you what, if you're Matt Wieters, you can hit 250 and get big hits like he has all season long and be such a value to a ball club. He's a guy that's not phased by the situation. He's been there, he's done that, and he just did it to the Cubs. And he has hit his third career Grand Slam. His first since 2013. He was looking for something up, he got it. And he drove himself in on top of everybody else on base. That was cool. As loud as this place was early, you can hear a pin drop. Well, that's the Nats offense this year. I mean, they're, they're quick strike. Hey, you blink and there's a five spot up there. They've done it all year. It's not like they go one run, two runs, one run. I mean, when they explode, they explode. And it looks like an off speed pitch. Jose Lobaton knew it. Did you see him in the background stand up on the top step as soon as he saw it hit? Stayed through it nice. Coming right at you at home. Yeah, throw that one back. Punch Jose Lobaton in the back. He knew as soon as he hit it, arm up in the air. He knows it's time to take off a helmet. He's not phased by the scenario. He isn't. Adam Lynn will pinch hit for Kinsler, who's now the pitcher of record on the winning side. Lynn has been outstanding as a pinch hitter. 12 out of 31. Dusty's got his big boys set up. Ryan Madsen getting loose. You figure Doolittle for the ninth, even though it's a four run lead. Strike one to Lynn. All started with the Bryce Harper infield single. That run charged to Montgomery. The next four to Edwards. Zim double, intentional walk, hit by pitch to tie in the grand slam. To the second baseman, and Hap ends the inning. But the Nationals score five times to take the lead here in the eighth, and Matt Wieters put four on the board at once. Coming on late, two in the seventh, five in the eighth. Daniel Murphy, 37th multi hit game. See that ball down below the graphic? That's the grand slam ball that just left the bat of Matt Wieters. It's sitting in the basket. Go to your home ball in the basket. Hanging curveball from Carl Edwards went real far. I didn't know if he got enough of it. When he hit it, I thought sack fly for sure. And then you watch John Jay and you saw his numbers and you're thinking, oh, wait, this is Wrigley Field. 
And that's going to get out of here, and it did. Grand slams are cool. And Wieners will catch a new pitcher, the right-hander Ryan Matson, who will make appearance number seven with the Nationals. He has a win. He has pitched shutout baseball through six innings since joining the Nats. And here's that matchup MP with Kyle Schwarber that he had the other night. Yeah, all fastballs up, and Schwarber couldn't lay off. So fastballs mid to upper 90s. 12 6 curveball that's firm to go with it and an occasional changeup. Tail on that one and Schwarber swings through it. Maybe you should get thrown out more often. Matt Weeders. Popped up. Kendrick. One away. Did you notice in between innings? We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, Dave, come on. Don't step on the Peanuts promotion that we do 162 nights in a row. They'll be at the Fitz. <laughs> Deuces Wild Tuesday. They're there from August 8th to the 10th. Go see the Peanuts. The PotomacNationals.com for more info. In between innings here, first time they did this, they they put up Brewers highlights on the video board here. Yeah. Brewers lost on a walk-off home run by Steven Sousa Jr., the former Nat. Well, they weren't going to show the Brewers winning. Exactly. <laughs> Cubs entered play today, a half game up in the Central. And so, if this this score holds, they'd stay that way. They cannot lose ground. Seven with tail for strike two. That's, 90, That's filthy. 97 under your hands. I mean, there's no way as a hitter you could even think about pulling the trigger on this. First of all, it's a ball and it's a strike and it's darn near 100. Struck him out. Madsen elevates and down goes half. This guy's filthy. Six and two thirds innings since the trade, FP. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of Ryan Madsen since he went to the A's, but since he's been in that, that was 98. Watch the run on this 98. I mean, elevated, and even if you're thinking about getting on top of it, which is difficult, it runs far enough away that you run out of bat. Ten strikeouts, one walk, three hits, and six and two thirds. Two down for Hayward, and he pulls the string. When he was the Phillies' closer, that was his bread and butter pitch six years ago, but he didn't throw this hard. He missed three full years. Surgery. And a base hit. Kendrick cannot cut it off. Hayward's had a good day at the plate, his third hit. And the 1,000th career hit for Hayward. So he gets three in one day and a milestone hit for the Cubs right fielder. Like Daniel Murphy said, congrats as he was walking by. There it Put is. Put it up on the video board and Hayward acknowledges the crowd. A nice moment there.
Madsen backs off the mound to, to let him soak it in. Any chance Baez swings at the first pitch after being walked twice? I'd say chances are high. It's probably a little antsy. Magic eight ball, chances are high. Locked him up though with a curve. That's why the magic eight ball stinks. It's never right. Gave the Cubs the lead with a hit in the second inning. And the Cubs held the lead most of the game until the eighth, the top of the eighth. The game tying hit by pitch and the grand slam. Tapper foul. On deck for the Cubs, Tommy LaStella would pinch it for the pitcher. LaStella just brought back from Iowa, Triple A. Struck him out swinging 98 on the fastball as Matson K's two in a scoreless eighth. The Nationals three outs away from winning the series. We go to the ninth. Cubs employee between innings trying to get Matt Weider's grand slam ball out of the basket. So how many Cubs employees does it take to retrieve a grand slam. Watch this. Splitter grip fastball grip splitter grip fastball grip. He's ambidextrous splitter grip. I mean we had fun what, with this during the break. What happens if you get to here and you drop it. Well you got to start all over again and then your fingers get cramped and you're up a creek. Does he do it? Oh, it's getting tricky right here. Reach I, over the top. I'm so easily amused. I think this is fascinating. You think Matt Weider saw that? Ladder holder guy did a good job. And in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> New pitcher for the Cubs, Koji Uihara, will face the top of the Nats order here in the ninth, leading eight to four. Blasted to deep right, long gone. 
Home run number 12 for Goodwin on the first pitch for Uyara, and it's nine to four. This offense is so quick strike. And good for Brian Goodwin. He makes a great play in center field. And a single a second time up, and then he hunts what looks like a fastball right down State Street for his 12th home run. Quiver and Oji has it. Flips to Rizzo. Uihara allowing his fifth home run of the year. Ambush, first pitch heater. See you later. The Nationals have scored eight unanswered. Got to tip my cap to you. You called it. The caught stealing. You called the momentum change. Eight unanswered since that caught stealing pickoff on the missed bunt. We well, can feel it. And a lot of times in a ball game, something that happens on defense gets the whole dugout going. You come in, you're thinking they're going to put this one away, six to one. But we don't have a chance now. They had a chance to put it on ice, and then something goes your way like that. You come in, everybody's chirping, and it gives you life. Murphy started that seventh inning with a double, and Rendon with a double, and the line was moving. And Harper started the eighth inning with a squibber just past the pitcher. By the time the Nats were done hitting, and Weeters had put that one in the basket, five were on the board. Price is trying the no stride simple approach right now. Not a save situation, but Doolittle getting ready for the last of the ninth. As Dusty Baker wants to win this series and the season series. Splitter back. Tune in to Nats Extra Post Game Show presented by WB Mason immediately following the game. It'll be Phil Wood and Ray Knight to break down this one, the road trip finale. And a good splitter there strikes out Harper. Bryce one for five. Bryce had the infield single to start up that five run eighth, but Ryan's bullet over the head of John Jay kind of got everybody's attention. And, you know, when you're 13 games up and 20 games over, that's when the dugout says, Here we come, boys. Watch out. It's good to see Zimmerman have a big hit against the Cubs. Brought in Edwards to face him, and he smacked it off the wall. Two balls and a strike. Cubs love the pitcher spot. Jay and Bryant, 9 1 and 2. Against presumably Doolittle in the bottom of the ninth. You're trying to hit a house across the street with that swing. I like it. What a rip. Just off the plate, full count. O 
Koji Uahara now 42. And he strikes out Zerman on the high fastball. But the Nationals extend their lead. A dozen home runs now for Brian Goodwin as he gets into one. 9 4 Nationals. Last chance for the Cubs. PM. The Nats are back in D.C. to open a homestand against the Marlins. Max Scherzer is the probable starter. He had his first career home run Tuesday against Miami. Pitch just one inning. He'll take a 12 and 5 record to the hill. And he'll face the pitcher that he homered against, Chris O'Grady, who's 2 and 1, former George Mason Patriot. Coverage begins at 6 30 with Nats Extra on Masson. Three outs away from a series win. Nationals leading nine to four. New pitcher on the hill is Sean Doolittle. Yeah, fastball 90 percent of the time for Sean. It averages 95 miles an hour. Slider occasional change to go with it. Slider seven percent. You see left, he's hit just 103. Right, he's 208 against the Nats left-handed closer. Not a save situation, obviously, but here we go. Pinch hitter will lead off. Albert Almora Jr. batting for Uihara. First at bat of the series, a little looper. Murphy tracking, and he has the out. Doolittle's eighth appearance. He's given up five runs, four earned in seven and a third innings. So then, with tomorrow's telecast, FP Bob Carpenter will be back with you. It's been great working with you and the entire massive crew on this road trip. Yeah, we enjoyed it, man. Great job. See you under the bus to the airport. Two outs away from a happy flight. Last time up, Jay was robbed on a terrific sliding catch by Goodwin. Nationals three headed bullpen in this one. Kinsler in the seventh. He's the pitcher of record to win. He's breaking ball. Matt's in a scoreless eighth. Doolittle trying to finish it off. Little hurries and gets him. Yeah, one more out to get, but when you talk about this series and everybody in the baseball world saying it might be an October preview, and the Cubs winning 14 of 19 coming out of the break, being one of the hottest teams in baseball, they have all hands on deck. They're pretty healthy right now. And if you come into Wrigley Field in a hostile environment and take two out of three, when maybe you're still a little bit banged up and you don't have Trey Turner, Michael A. Taylor, Jason Worth. Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer, Gio Gonzalez gone on paternity leave. Well, we said this wasn't a big series, but you know maybe that gets in the Cubs' head a little bit that this team's even better when they get healthy and they came in here and spanked us around a little bit. So we'll see. They still have to worry about the Brewers, who I don't think are going away. And with Milwaukee losing, the Cubs would stay a half game up.
you know, it's not a big deal when you lose two out of three. But when you win two out of three, let's make it a big deal. Well, especially the way this one went. I mean, they, the Cubs had it in their grasp potentially. They're leading 4 1. They had Lester dealing. The Nationals have scored eight unanswered runs. And they are a strike away from a series win. Brewers win the division just for the fact that I don't think I can handle Chicago again. Broken bat. Defoe ends it. The Nationals take the series and they win the season series over the Cubs four games to three. The Nationals score eight unanswered runs. Matt Wieters third career grand slam. The difference. He broke the four all tie in the eighth and the Nationals win going away for FP Santangelo and Dan Colco. I'm Dave Jagler the final score the Nationals nine the Cubs four. Join us Monday on Masson when the Nationals open a homestand against the Miami Marlins coverage begins at 6 30 p.m. This has been a presentation of Masson. Stay tuned for Nats extra post game with Phil and Ray coming up next.